Hi, and welcome back to Ask DRTK. This is the second video in my EQ Masterclass series, and today we're gonna to take a look at parametric equalizers, how we can use them to get instruments to sit in the mix, what we can do with female vocal, and also spoken word. Now, I introduced the idea of parametric equalizers in the first video in my EQ Masterclass series. And if you haven't watched that yet, I encourage you to check that out and then come back to this video. But parametric equalizers have been really popular. They're probably the most popular kind of EQ that's used today, especially since we started mixing in the box where we could really visualize the sound. Now I talked about in the first video, the importance of listening and not just you know, mixing or, or tuning with our eyes. And that still applies here, but I wanna show you how to use parametric equalizers for a few different situations. You know, we have a lot of instruments potentially in a mix that we're recording, and it's not only about the volume levels, it's about making sure that the frequencies mesh nicely together so we can hear the drums, we can hear the bass, we can hear the guitars, pianos, whatever the other instruments are. And that's really important to get an overall sound that doesn't sound crowded and isn't fatiguing to listen to. Now, I'm also going to take a look at female vocals, and we'll see just how we can get an, a female vocal to be a little more airy, a little more breath, plus to make sure it stands out above a mix. And finally, I'm gonna take a look at spoken word. I know a lot of you like to use spoken word to get to that tailored sound, maybe to get that broadcast sound or to get additional clarity. And so we're gonna take a look at spoken word. All of this again is gonna be done in Studio One. I'm gonna use a few different uh, presets here uh, to give you an idea of a couple different EQs. Everything's gonna be in context. So there will be compression, there will be you know, other plug-in effects, some reverb that's happening on the female vocal, because I want you to hear EQ in context. You know, none of these processes, none of these kinds of effects stand on their own. They're all part of an overall adjustment to get the sound exactly where we want it. So let's take a look at how we can get EQ to sit in the mix properly. We'll start out with instrumental. Okay, and now that you've had a chance to hear the sound a little bit without the EQ, first I'll go ahead and add the EQ onto each channel, and then we'll go back and see what I've done. Okay, so now you've had a chance to hear it with and without EQ applied across drums, bass, and guitar. We'll go ahead and take a look at what I've done on each individual track. So we'll start out here on the uh, on the drums. So I'll go ahead and solo them and I'll let you hear without the EQ. And I'll pull the EQ up so you can see what's there as well. Okay, let's go ahead. And now I'll go ahead and add the EQ in. Okay, and hopefully you can hear that I've opened the drum set up. You know, this isn't this isn't metal, so I'm not trying to have just a smashing snare drum here that's overpowering anything, but I've tried to open the drums up so they kind of have air, especially with the cymbal and that ride cymbal, you can hear it above the mix. Let's uh, go ahead now and take a look at the bass. And you can see that I've kind of filled in the lower end a little bit here, which will make it sit better in the mix. It'll give it a little more of that depth. And I've also just brought up a little bit here in and around 500 hertz, just so we can hear the, uh, the finger picking a little bit going on here. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, again, I'll turn it off.
Okay, and so hopefully that translated well. You can also see with these channels that I have the EQ applied before compression. So I have other things going on on the channels, but because this is the EQ masterclass, we're not looking at compression or anything here. We're just looking at the difference that the EQ will make. And so with the bass, again, I'm trying to fill in that lower end, but also bring out just some of the musicianship that's going on. Now uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at the, uh, at the lead guitar here. I'll solo that out. Again, I'll uh, open up the EQ and I'll turn it off. Okay, and so without any EQ, now we'll add it in. And you can see that I'm just emphasizing a little bit in the upper range again. I want to pick up the musicianship that's going on in here. That's really the key. Other than that, I'm not trying to... Uh, to do anything drastic here. I've filled in a little bit of body, but it's basically about the uh, musicianship here. I want to get the, the action on the strings here. Okay, and so that should give you some idea as to uh, as to what we're doing here with the EQ. So now uh, that we'll do this, I'll just go ahead and I'll add one at a time in and let you hear the uh, hear the mix again. So we'll start with nothing, and we'll start with adding the drums in, and we'll work our way along. And now we'll go ahead and take one away at a time. And so I hope that gives you an idea. Here we're using the parametric EQ to just balance out some of the, what I call musicianship or the action that's happening, especially on the string and percussion instruments. It's a great thing to do. Also trying to reduce some of the problematic areas uh, that are overlapping in the frequencies between the instruments. And this way we get a much more even mix, everything going through. You could see that, you know, we could hear the drums, but we could hear the lead guitar in the mix. The, the drums occupied, you know, some air and gave us a little bit of, of reinforcement in that lower percussion. The bass, on the other hand, really filled in the low end of the mix and gave us kind of a, a thick, powerful sound. And that's the, the idea of EQ, is that we can use it to tailor the sound to get it to fit better in the mix. It's not about changing the way the instruments sound. It's really all about the fit in the mix and getting the instruments to each stand on their own without stepping on each other. Now we're going to move over to female vocal. I want to do something a little bit different with vocals for you. And so I have an example with the vocals and also with a mix. I'm not going to go through the whole mix, just the female vocals, but then I'll show you how it sits in the mix after. Where have you been? It's like I waited all my life. So happy that I found you. Okay, and so here we have a female vocal. I've already applied some effects to this uh, chain. We have, uh, we have compression happening, uh, a little bit of air circuit here, as well as reverb. But let's uh, go ahead and take a look at the effect of EQ. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the EQ here. And for this example, I'm going to use color EQ. This is a uh, parametric equalizer. Um, the idea with this one typically is you adjust it with the control knobs. We have, of course, the uh, gain, we have frequency, and we have Q. So we can set the width here as well. And then we also have some other features here that I'll get into in another video, a little more detail. But for now, we're going to use the standard features with this. And I've already made some uh, changes here. So I'm just going to put the music back on. I'll put the vocal on and let you hear the difference. Where have you been? It's like I waited all my life. So happy that I found you. I'm paper thin. I have an 
So as you can hear, it kind of has a very kind of natural, high, uh, breathy, airy sense to it. And that's what I've done is I've gone ahead and added some boost up in that upper range. I've also scooped a little bit out in here around 450 hertz with a, a, a fairly moderate width Q here of 0.5. And so that's just given me um, a little bit of uh, taking some of the, the uh, lower tone out and giving me a more airy, breathy sound uh, for her vocal. And um, I'll just show you the difference. I'll put that back on and I'll make a few adjustments. Where have you been? It's like I waited all my life. So happy that I found you. I'm paper thin. I haven't always been this shy, but haven't felt this in a while now. Where have you been? It's like I waited all my life. So happy that I found you. I'm paper thin. I haven't always been this shy. And so as you can hear, that does give, uh, give the vocal a lot more air, a lot more breath. Now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and place it uh, in the mix and I'll again switch the EQ off and on just so you can hear the difference in how it makes the vocal uh, stand out within the, uh, within the overall sound. So starting out here without the EQ. Where have you been? It's like I waited all my life. So happy that I found you. I'm paper thin. I haven't always been this shy, but haven't felt this in a while now. Where have you been? It's like I waited all my life. So happy that I found you. I'm paper thin. I haven't always been this shy, but haven't felt this in a while now. And so as you can hear, it's not only about altering the sound of the vocal, but also the way it sits in the mix. And by adding that air and removing those mid tones in around 433 hertz, the vocal's no longer competing with the guitar in the background, but it also is elevated with that, that breathiness, that air above the mix. And so this is an example of how we would use a parametric EQ in, uh, in, in a mix situation on individual tracks as opposed to the overall bus with a vocal. Now, I wanted to show you using a parametric EQ on the female vocal in this mix, just so you could see how it really can help elevate the vocalist above the music not step on the music. The music is still there, but we elevated the voice. We added some airiness, some breath to the sound, which really makes things stand out. Also, I included reverb and I included compression and also an air plug in here because I wanted to show you EQ in the context of how it would be used, not EQ on its own. I don't think it helps you to understand how it fits into the mix of effects that we need to apply to tracks unless we have everything else there. Of course, in my compression masterclass, and other mixing and mastering videos will have more information about those types of effects. But for now, we're looking at EQ only. So now that we've looked at female vocal, I wanna move over into spoken word because I know a lot of you like to use you know, uh, EQ to adjust the sound of your microphone. Maybe you wanna have a deeper broadcast sound. Maybe you're wanting to bring out some clarity. And so we'll use a parametric EQ for this. This is not actually my number one choice of EQ, especially for boosts. I tend to use a parametric EQ more for a few surgical cuts just to control room resonances when we're looking at dialogue. But I will show you how you can use this as a one-stop fits all for spoken word. So let's take a look. And so I have a short dialogue sample recorded in here. You'll see I've set up EQ and compression. Again, we're gonna look only at the EQ today. So let me start this on loop. I'll open up the uh, EQ first and I've got it turned off right now. And you can see that I've made some minor adjustments here. Uh, let's go ahead and turn it on and then I'll explain what I've done. And this is an example of spoken words so that we can hear the effect of EQ on dialogue. And this is an example of spoken words so that we can hear the effect of EQ on dialogue. And this is an example of spoken words so that we can hear the effect of EQ on dialogue. And this is an example of spoken words so that we can hear the effect of EQ on dialogue.
And so looking at what I've done here on the EQ, I've taken this lower band here to about 86 hertz. I've got a fairly wide Q, but I'm also rolling off around 51 hertz here. And the idea is that there really isn't any information below there that's needed for my voice. And I've gone ahead and made a very small surgical cut here at 320 hertz. And I've made another one sitting here right in around just under 1000 hertz. And uh, the 320 is to control one of the resonance frequencies I have in the room I'm recording in. The, um, the one, one kilohertz or 970 hertz is really just about uh, altering a little bit of boxiness, controlling that with my voice. And then I've added a very little bit of air in here um, in the upper presence area, not even really so much air, but presence, uh, very, very minor, uh, you know, two, two decibel boost here uh, with a frequency of about just a little over six. So for me, that's just a little bit higher than where a lot of the sibilance starts to come in. And so you got to watch here when you're boosting in the treble area around anywhere between five and eight K because you can introduce sibilance. Now you can always add a de after, or again, you can use a dynamic EQ that will take that into account. That'll be for yet another video. But uh, let's again, take a look at the frequencies that are coming through here versus what I have actually boosted and cut. And this is an example of spoken words so that we can hear the effect of EQ on dialogue. And this is an example of spoken words so that we can hear the effect of EQ on dialogue. And this is an example of spoken words so that we can hear the effect of EQ on dialogue. And this is an example of spoken words. And so I hope that gives you an idea. You could see definitely when I, you know, when I had any kind of sibilant sound, there was some boosting in these frequencies right here in and around 5K. So that's why I wanted to minimize it, but still open up the, uh, the clarity a little bit. And I've just added a little bit of bass in to thicken up the sound here. Uh, but again, it's, it's tempered with the fact that I have this low cut happening here that is, is reducing a lot of those really boomy low frequencies here. So just trying to, to, to tailor the sound to be a little bit warmer, control resonance, and add a little bit of clarity. And that's really the idea when we're EQing dialogue or spoken word. It's not about changing the voice that you have. It's about dealing with any frequencies that are problematic in the room and or in your voice. If there's any unpleasant frequencies you want to deal with, I chose to keep this, you know, keep this pretty simple, gone to only uh, four, four points here, but uh, you can use uh, parametric EQs with many, many different uh, surgical points and cuts that you can introduce. You know, some have, have 11, 12 and, and more, but I encourage you to keep it fairly simple. You can start cutting a lot of individual frequencies, but then what it can do is start to make your vocal sound really thin and hollow. So you gotta be a little bit careful with that. With EQ, less really is more. It's, it's just about enhancing the sound, not about changing the sound. Now, no one processing effect does it all. It's not all about EQ. It's not all about compression, reverb, or otherwise. It's a mix of all of these things that creates the tone, whether it's music, individual instruments, a master mix, a bus, spoken word, um, game audio effects, anything really. What it comes down to is the right mix of effects to give you a pleasant sound. And so I hope this gave you an idea with EQ of where it fits into that mix. I haven't excluded all of the others because I wanted you to hear EQ in reference to what it would sound like in an actual produced uh, you know, piece of music and or, and or spoken word again. And so with EQ, uh, less is more and uh, getting things to fit together, especially when we have multiple voices or we have multiple instruments, we want to get them to all sit nicely together in the mix so each can be heard without stepping on the others. Parametric equalizers are a great tool when we want to tailor the sound of either dialogue or individual instruments, but where they really shine is in getting multiple voices or instruments to sit well in a mix. There's nothing like being able to control the overlap and the conflicting frequencies between different instruments to get really the best possible sound so you can hear everything without any one thing stepping on the other in a mix. And I hope this video helped you out with that. If it did, check out one of the other videos on the screen. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.